Hello and welcome to a special Perusia podcast. I'm Shabba Reis, your host, and live in the studio with me is Deacon Roderick uh, Pirata. I hope I said it right. Deacon Roderick Pirata, and he's from the Parramatta Diocese, and we're going to talk about his faith journey, his calling to the diaconate. We're going to discuss permanent uh, deacons and also uh, an upcoming event for deacons as well. So welcome to our studio. Thank you, Chabelle. You. Lovely to see you. Yeah, great to see you too. Um, may maybe uh, before we dive into the diaconate and that whole um, vocational calling, could we talk a little bit just about yourself, like your faith journey, and uh, before we lead into your calling to the diaconate, who is uh, Roderick uh, Ferrata? <laughs> well, I... Uh if, if, if anybody who are, who are actually listening to us and uh, hear a bit of an accent, yeah. so th that's uh, a Maltese accent. Okay. I'm from Malta. I'm born from Malta. I'm uh, the fourth uh, child from six uh, in, in my family okay. and my parents. Um, my mother uh, has passed away and my father is still alive, living back in Malta. And oh. most of my siblings are living in... Uh, uh, in Australia now, so okay. five of them from six are living in Australia. Oh, beautiful. So Malta's a beautiful country. I hear so many stories and images, the food. It's, a, it's an island, right? It's a, it's a small little island uh, south of Sicily, about okay. 80 kilometers south of Sicily. And uh, there's about half a million population now, very oh, wow. tiny little island. And, and many Catholics there, right? It's a well, yes. I mean, we, we definitely have a uh, history of, uh, you know, the Catholic faith from St. Paul, who was okay. shipwrecked in Malta and we are in the Acts of the Apostles, you know, that he and uh, the Maltese uh, uh, have uh, welcomed Paul and welcomed yeah. the Christianity since since Christ's time. So. What was it called Malta in the Acts? Yes, or, yes, yes, it's called Malta. Yes, okay, fantastic. Yes. I'll look out for that. Yes, of course. Oh, beautiful. Yes. And actually the feast of the uh, shipwreck of St. Paul, um, we celebrate it in February. So. Okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, fine. Can you tell us about your upbringing? Were you were you raised in a in a practicing household, a Catholic family yes, household? Yes, yes, yes. Of course, yes. The uh, we I was raised in a small little village called Nasha, N A W X A R, and it's exactly in the middle of the uh, of the uh, of the island. And uh, the the village that I lived in is the parish church is very baroque it's one of the first parishes in 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 malta and it goes back the church to the 1500s so oh, wow. uh, so and it's dedicated to the nativity of our lady and uh, the 8th of september the feast is of the 8th of september and i'm mentioning that because it does relate to my vocation as well sort of you oh, know as, as, as a deacon and uh, and as a brother, uh, as a brother Jesuit brother as well. So I'll talk about that hopefully later on. Um, so I was in a in a. Um, we used to go catechesis every day. There is a society um, lay people who uh, who actually dedicate their life to the catechism of children. And the founder is uh, Saint George Preca, who is mm. the first multi saint. You know that was. Um, um, elevated to sainthood by uh, uh, Pope John, Pope John Paul II, okay. about about I think um, ten years ago, twelve years ago, you know. So Is he the um, only so canonized saint from Malta? Yes, correct, okay, correct, so that's correct. Good to know. That's right. Yes. So, um, so, so I used to go there, and and they they dedicate their their lives to catechism for children and for young adults, and I always was there and. And we've done a lot of social stuff, so mm. not just catechism. It's sort of, sort of, sort of like Don Bosco style, you know, sort of that uh, it's ah, for, yes. for young, but from from younger to to older, and to older uh, ages up to 16, 18, and then sort of you become full member when you're 18 and above. I mm. didn't last that long. I I think I lasted until I was 18, and because in my village there was the nov the Jesuits novitiate. Um, I've always had very close associated with the Jesuits, you know, and okay. uh, which eventually um, I, uh, I uh, after after a while of discernment, I actually entered the the Jesuit novitiate in Nashar, where where I live, oh, wow. um, in in 1983. So 1983, yeah. and um, as as a brother, but I, I never wanted to be a priest, so a Jesuit brother, so. Uh, Jesuits have uh, have uh, priests and brothers, 
And I was the first Jesuit brother vocation after 30 or 40 years without any Jesuit brothers. And up to today, they still don't have any Jesuit brothers so in, in Malta. So, as a, yeah. so you joined. How long were you there for? No, I, I, I was there for nine years, wow. um, you know, eight, nine years. Wow. And, uh, and uh, I was, uh, after two years of novitiate and one year what we call a juniorate, which is, juniors is sort of basically preparing you for university uh, to study and things like that. So, so it was one year of, of uh, learning how to study, learning how to use, you know, um, uh, the library and things mm. like that. And we didn't have computers and internet at that time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. We had to go through the cards and everything <laughs> for references. And uh, after three years there, the, the provincial asked me to, uh, to, uh, to go to Ireland in Dublin and oh, wow. uh, to do my nursing. So, um, you know, my, as, as a brother, as a Jesuit brother. And uh, so I've done three years of uh, uh, nursing in Dublin, in Dunleary, to be exact, which is south of Dublin. Wow. Um, and uh, and uh, I've done beautiful three years in, in uh, living in the community, but then working and studying in the hospital, you know, so, so I, I was full time. It, um, is that something that each brother or, or even priest uh, have to take up uh, a particular area of ministry? So was that one you chose or, or yes. were you just appointed? Um, yes, uh, that's, a, you know, that's right. You know. So n not really for priesthood because priests do philosophy and theology. Okay, so more teaching. Uh, that's right. Okay, so, yep. so it's more it's more studying for priesthood, which is mainly philosophy and theology. Okay. But in my case, as a brother, yes, you're right in the sense of that each the provincial will take what are your your skills, what okay. are your talents, what okay. are what would you like to do, and if it fits with the mission of the of the province and of the you know of um, obviously that I, I wanted to become a nurse, so so mm. I always wanted to, Interesting. and obviously the, at that time and even now. Um, the, uh, the, the the priests are getting older, so there was some there was a need for somebody to uh, uh, to take care of of the priests, you know, Jesuit priests. When when I come back after the um, after my my qualifications, you know, unfortunately or fortunately, um, I I uh, I left before I qualified as a nurse. I left the Jesuits before, uh, you know, okay. I, I um, so that was sort of three years in Malta, and about three and a half years, four years. In, in Dublin, you know, sort of, and when I left it exactly um, in 1990, um, sort of the, 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 the Jesuits, obviously I had to get permission uh, from, the, from Rome to, to, um, to release me from my vows and, you know, of chastity, poverty and obedience, you know. To oh, wow. Were so you, to so you were not yet fully professed? Uh, no, no, but okay. in the, the Jesuits, the way the, way, uh, the Jesuits um, work is that um, after two years of novitiate, you do your vows, um, uh, perpetual vows, you do your vows perpetual. So from my point of view, sort of when I done the vows, it was like for, for life. Okay. However, the society, the Society of Jesus, because that's what it's, the Jesuits mm. are called, um, does not sort of commit themselves to you until your last vows, which could be 13, 14, 15 years later. You know, so so it's it's it, the covenant sort of is on in one way, sort of your it's your co your commitment is for life, but obviously that changed. You know, sort of even though it was one of the hardest decisions I've ever made in my life, I can tell wow. you. <laughs> so wow. Because it was it, well, I was outside of my uh, you know I was outside my my country. Yes. Um, I had my final exams, and just two months later I left. So. And uh, but I was very clear that that wasn't you know sort of what God wanted me for you know sort of at that time. Wow. You know? It's an important part of discernment, isn't it? No, doing what God wants. Definitely. Uh, and that's what we'll, we'll unpack a little bit. But yeah. what, so what were your next steps after that? You left. Well, af after that, uh, I worked in England um, oh, as wow. a nurse then. Yeah. Um, and then in 1991, I came. I came to Australia. So oh. I came to Australia. What brought you to Australia? I. I yeah. Did you have uh, friends here or family here first? Yes, okay. m all my families are, 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 are mainly in Australia. There okay. are already like three brothers here. Yes, okay. And, um, and two brothers and a sister. So, um, and, uh, and my father always told us, go to Australia, go to Australia. Mm -hmm. He never 
made it. Uh, I think because of my mom sort of never wanted to actually, you know, with six kids to, to leave the country sort of, mm -hmm. you know, it was, I think, too hard for, for, for them. And, uh, and my, but my dad loved Australia, you know, and even my house in Malta was called Sydney. So that's how, ah, wow. that's how much brainwash <laughs> we were. <laughs> So you settled, did you speak English at that point? I mean, you had English... Uh well, Malta, mainly we speak in Maltese, so yep. it's, it's a very Semitic language. Okay. So, um, so we have uh, probably 40% of it sort of Arab Arabic as okay. well, you know, like... Um, um, but English is our second language or sort of our first language, but we don't speak it sort of except with tourists. Uh -huh. So when I go, went to Ireland, and especially when you want to express yourself, it's, it wasn't that easy. Okay. And <laughs> especially, you, st you know, you, until you start thinking in English, not in Maltese and not translating, you know. Yes. Um, my English wasn't that great in, 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 in Ireland, I can tell you. But, um, but then it gets easier and easier, even mm. though we write and all our exams were in English. You know, yeah, um, wow. it's still because you don't speak it every day. It's still difficult, Absolutely. you know, like and especially when you want to to express sort of deeper feelings or deeper concepts. Yeah, it, it, it's not easy to 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 explain it in in, That's true. in in another language. You know. Did you work as a nurse when you first came? How, yes. What were your first? Th then, then in Australia, I. Um, I specialized in uh, in the uh, care of the elderly, so oh, yeah. uh, geriatrics and mental health of the elderly. So, uh, so I specialized in, as a as a consultant, as a eventually as a uh, um, what uh, what we call psychogeriatric nurse. You know, so okay. so it's uh, it's for people over sixty five with mental illness usually. But I specialized, even though dementia is not a mental illness, uh, strictly speaking, but I specialized in behavioral management and, and dementia and pe with, with people with mental illness. And that's sort of for 35 years as a, as a, as a nurse, that's how I worked with. You oh, know, wow. I worked here. And I established sort of uh, dementia units. I, I've done a lot in my career, thank God, as a nurse. Um, so uh, I established dementia units and uh, I worked in, in areas where uh, uh, went to a, a most of the nursing homes in this area in Sydney to uh, teach staff about behavior management and things mm. like that. So, so that was my speciality. Wow. Yeah. I, I, I just, uh, I mean, just very quickly about dementia. I'm always curious about um, the different types. So, so yes. if, if just for general uh, knowledge here, those, because uh, I, I remember having a neighbor, he passed away a few years ago, but. You know, we used to greet each other, and he would say hello, and uh, ask for your name, and then you tell him your name. Tell him, he ask for your day, and then he'll sort of ask all over again. Oh, what's your name? And, and sort of repeat. Yes, yes. But but he, every conversation was always about things that he remembered in. So the he had long-term memory, but the short-term memory wasn't there. Is that uh, the most common form of dementia? Is that that's, very? That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Yeah. So so mainly, you know, um, dementia. There's literally hundreds of different types wow, of dementia. I didn't know that. Okay. Literally. Okay. But you are right, yeah, 50 to 70 percent of, of dementia are called of the Alzheimer's type. Okay. And, and the, even just with the little that you have mentioned, you know, sort of, it, it, mostly with Alzheimer's, the, the, the typical thing with Alzheimer's is that, that the short-term memory actually goes first. You okay. know, so so you write by by saying that that you know, but dementia is not just short term memory. So okay. so eventually they all finish up the same. Yeah. You know, with with memory loss, but but Alzheimer's disease, which is you know the most common type of dementia, okay. um, is 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 characterized by short term memory, and and sort of remembering more the past rather than the present. So is it a very um, prominent in Australia? I mean, I mean, doing uh, oh yes, I mean, I mean, uh, you know, sort of. Uh, 20, you know, uh, uh, above 65, the, the age is the biggest risk. Okay. So the older you get, the more the more chance you, you'll get. But over 65, one in 10 will have dementia. Wow. You know, yeah, so wow. And every 10 years it triples, you know, doubles, you know. So, so if you're 75, one in five. If you're okay. 85, you know, sort of... Um, one in two, okay. you know, one in one in three will have dementia over eighty-five. You know, so. Are there anything? Um, uh, sorry, we're we're <laughs> diversing a bit, but I'm just curious because, uh, you know, as we we are having an aging population, yeah, like, yeah. are there things people can do to sort of 
minimize that risk of, of having it or like train the brain or yes. th what other things yeah there are there? there are there are i mean i think the younger you start the, the better okay in the sense of if you take your your care of your heart and your mind mm -hmm. then you have less chance of of dementia you know when yeah. i say they take care of your heart and and your mind is you know try to prevent diabetes try to be prevent high blood pressure so that you know. can affect the mind definitely interesting definitely okay. definitely um so because it's associated, you know, healthy lifestyle exercise nowadays is yeah. one of the biggest, um, one of the biggest um, preventative of, mm. of, so any exercise, so not only just mental exercise, but physical exercise, you know. Okay. We, we always say, go dancing, ballroom dancing especially, you know. <laughs> really? <laughs> because the best thing about ballroom dancing is uh, that you're socializing, yes. so it's so one that's of the preventative, important. so okay. very important. You're doing exercise because you're dancing and the third one is you are trying to remember the steps ah, so it's gonna be, yeah the brain activity <laughs> so so you have to to remember the steps That's to dance true. especially ballroom dancing so <laughs> so if you want to minimize your 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 uh, your, your alzheimer's you know chance or risk um, go ballroom dancing yeah, interesting there you go you've heard it here today on the Parisia podcast <laughs> ballroom from dancing will wrong. save you from <laughs> dementia um okay. now just bit closer time to your faith journey here yes, now yeah. so did you um did you get married uh, yes, did you, you tell yes, us about that that's next right, phase that's of your right life? that's exactly right you know so um so then um, i married catherine um, catherine fitzgibbon from blacktown and uh, at that time there was what they called this patrician club which was oh, okay. um which was a single Catholic club for you know um, in Parramatta. We used you know in the cat in near ah, the cathedral. Interesting. Okay. And and as as you as because it was a single Catholic club, so like not just a single club, but a single Catholic in the yes. sense of never married. Yes. Um, it was easy to find you know sort of a, a partner there in some sense. It's it's <laughs> it's it's self yeah. self, self you filtered filter. through. Yeah. Exactly. Everyone you is Catholic so here. So many yeah. so many things. Um, so I, I met my wife there, and when she came the first time, I was the president of the club actually, and uh, and uh, I saw her coming from the door, and I said, "That woman is going to be my wife." <laughs> you know? you, you really, you just seriously? That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. I mean, she will tell you a different version, uh, but, <laughs> 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 but but that was my, you know, and uh, actually, you know, after you know less than one year, we got engaged, and less than uh, two years, then we, we got married. You wow! Know, so, so yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And I was 33, you know, sort of 32 when I got married, you know. Very yeah. symbolic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. What, uh, d and children? Any? Yeah, unfortunately, that was very, very important. Again, a, a big, big challenge um, and, and a great, um, how would I say, challenge of, of my fate, really, okay. that um, eventually um, we, we, we couldn't, we found we couldn't have children. Okay. And, so. and that was... Um, uh, that was a big blow, you know, because obviously um, uh, we we wanted, you know, we thought that, you know, uh, we're pretty good. Hopefully, make a good father and mother, and, yeah, and sort yeah. of to to um, uh, to to realize what uh, you know how that that uh, to have to live without children is 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 something. Uh, it's a challenge, you know. It's a challenge both for relationship, you know, just myself and my wife, and. And as well as, <coughs> you know, and this is uh, one of the most important things about my vocation as well, you know, sort of, uh, because in a sense, um, and I don't mind talking about it because although it hurts, you know, when I talk about it, because uh, um, uh, is, is because uh, people take it for granted that they have children. Absolutely. You know? and, and it's, you know, and there you see how much um, children are a gift, yes. not something that, you know, I want or That's you know or yes. or that that oh no I, I want a girl not a boy or yeah. I want this and I want it's that. like a shopping list a and shopping we're just picking list, another you know, thing exactly, or, yeah, exactly. product so so that's that that was a challenge and uh, and and perhaps you know uh, you know it was more a challenge for for my wife than myself because you know in some sense I, I lived celibacy <laughs> you know yeah, for a long time and and uh, you know, I always thought the possibility of never have children because I was, you know, I took the vows of chastity. You know? Yes, yes. So, 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 um, so that was a challenge, I think, in uh, in, in the relationship. But, um, but then, sort of, um, you know, uh, we, we we always sort of, uh, I've always continued to be very, very active in the parish of Saint Clair, Holy Spirit. Okay. And uh, I've always been in in. Uh, 
um, in music, you know, sort of music ministry, always sort of um, because I played the clarinet as well. So oh, wow. okay. you know, I, I play I played the clarinet. I've always played the clarinet since I was ten years of age. So, um, so that's something still I do now. So, um, have you, have you have, uh, made up your own sort of compositions? No, things, I'm not that good. Okay. I'm not <laughs> that good. I can play pretty everything, but I'm not that good. Uh, no, I've never. I mean, I studied to play, but I've never studied music as such. Okay. You know, sort of. Um, so Just naturally, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's yeah. amateurish, sort of, <laughs> quite amateurish. But but it's the longest thing I've been doing. I think you know since I was ten years. Wow. So and I uh, still do it. Now I'm I'm with a band actually, the Maltese Concert ah. Band, and I'm oh, the. Nice. I'm the assistant director and like a conductor and I play the band and, and the president of the band as well. So I've got other things than, <laughs> than just faith things, sort of, that's more cultural stuff, but still associate with the church, with the feast of Brilliant. the church, you know, generally. So, so yeah, so we were talking about sort of not having children and things like that and how, how that... That but would have been, I mean, I do want to just sort of unpack because yeah. I know there's a lot of people watching and We've just had, as we record this, um, as we're recording this, the big announcement on the on the feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus in America, uh, Roe v. Wade happened, so it got overturned. Correct, so correct. this is 49 years in Washington, where the, the federal um, law, where where it it was, it's legalized abortion, and and so for whatever reason, and, and you know everyone's got their own reasons um, for wanting an abortion, but but that. That speaks to a lot of people who, who say, yeah, how many unwanted children, ha how many women have fallen pregnant unwilling, you know, without knowing? And, and, and there's a real, it's the bigger question is, how do we prevent that from happening? Mm -hmm. And that's another conversation. Mm -hmm. It's not, um, but, uh, and we know that contraception on its own isn't the answer. But, but it speaks to those people who've been trying, mm -hmm. in your case, so hard to have a child and are not blessed with children yes. of their own, and how hard that can be. So, some people say, you know, you know, it, if if one partner <coughs> was not um, able to fall pregnant, then that can be a means of uh, annulment, mm -hmm. um, and you know, and legit if that was kept from one partner. But I remember, I remember facing a decision like that uh, personally. Mm -hmm. uh, if the possibility wasn't going to happen, but mm -hmm. the, there's a higher call. Marriage. The idea is that you're open to life. You love each That's other, exactly right. and the fruit of that love. Is, is children yeah. and so whether they come or not come it doesn't take away the sacrament of matrimony where you come together as a couple the two become one a and then it's up to God isn't it it's a complete That's sort right. of surrendering now it's, we do our part but then God has to do his part and then That's right. That's and right. and so when you realize you can't fall pregnant that idea of still you know wanting to come together as a couple being open continually open to life which is the calling um, exactly right. Can you speak of anyone now just sort of, I guess, suffering in this space, people yes. really concerned that yes. they can't. I know a handful of personal friends as well in the same boat. And I always think of them when, when people who say, oh, I've got so many children, or I don't want to have more than one child or two mm. children. And they've sort of made up their mind of the perfect family. That's I need right. a boy and a girl. I've got the complete set. I'm done. And then when they find out you have eight children, it's like, oh, you, you know, don't you have a TV or, you know, you get all these, all these sort of things. So, you know, just think tw twice about how you say that. Some people are really trying to have a child and they can't. Can you speak to those right now watching? Um, just, just to, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think, I, I mean, I'm a very positive man. So yeah, I can see it, that. And that's yeah, why let's I'm put it this way. Um, and, and I do have uh, sort of, um, I did keep actually, I read it somewhere sort of, um, uh, about about how to respond to, to all the things that people yeah. tell you, you yes. know, sort of like, um, it's interesting, I pick you on one thing you've just said there, you know, sort of the, our ex-Prime Minister, you know, um, uh, was was absolutely smashed on, on, on the media because you just said you're, you, you know, I'm blessed with children. Yes. And obviously those who did not have children, so that means, are they not blessed, you know, and, yeah. and they went, yeah. I yeah. don't think he meant that way, no. and I don't see it myself. 
that because I have children, I'm not blessed, you know, by that's God. Right. We're all blessed. So, uh, yeah. so we're all blessed. Yeah. But anyway, that's sort of media. But yeah. I, th I thought it's, it was interesting, mm, yeah. you know, sort of how, how people take it, you know, because, because obviously those who had no children, then they said, oh, so that means we're not blessed. Well, he hasn't. He, he didn't wasn't say, thinking it that was way, no. It wasn't. The context was not that anyway. And, and, and so, so I think that's important. So it doesn't mean that you, if you don't have children, you're not blessed by God. You know, I okay, think that's, that's good. That's good. To I think I think that's yeah, a myth. Clear up. Yeah, yeah that's definitely yeah. a myth. Yeah. And and when you say I'm blessed with children, it does not follow at all that you say that because you know those who don't have children are not blessed. That's true. I, I think I think the children let's put are that. a blessing. Whether it, we're blessed with or without them, and then the children are an added blessing. Yeah, it's an a different added blessing, blessing yeah. Or, yeah. or or as part of that blessing. Yeah, that's right. As part of that blessing. Yes. yes. As part of that call. So I, I think my message to those who have, don't have children would be, you know, see, and I preach it now as a deacon, you know, yeah, sort of, absolutely. see what is your vocation as a, um, a, as a baptized person. Mm -hmm. Find what is, okay, I might not be, um, my, my vocation, my, or I thought it would be of being the best father of, for my children. That's what I thought. That's mm. my plans. God's plans were different. Mm -hmm. God's plans, and I say it every day, and one of the nicest thing about the, the deacon, you know, vocation, is that I baptized almost every Sunday people, you know, yeah, I baptize yeah. people, and I well, tell them, I'm not a father physically of any of, of, any of my own children, but I'm a father, spiritual father of all these people that I baptized every Sunday, you know, and I... I I bring them into the children of, of, you know, as children of, of in the church, you know, sort of children of God in the church, mm -hmm. and that is that is something that I find huge consolation, huge blessings, yes. and maybe even better than if I had my own kids, you know. So, so if you can say that, you know, yeah. sort of, and and but in some sense, I'm not saying that the suffering and that pain is not there, you know. It's a wound. A womb is a wound. And you always have a scar, yeah. okay, yeah. to talk nursing, so to speak. You know, Absolutely. the scar would be there. You know, um, so and and as you saying, as you said very well, you know, um, I find it very difficult to even understand um, abortion. You know, because yeah. and and I find it very difficult to discuss it because yeah. you know, um, but that's sort of um, because I can't see how, you know, how you could ever think you know to kill somebody you know, from your womb, or say mm. that that's not a human being or whatever. But that's, again, as, I, as you said very well, I mean, I, can under, I, I still can understand the reasons why people do it, but I, it, it, I find it very hard, you know, because yes. we wanted so much and we couldn't have it. Yeah, you know, so yeah. Thank you for sharing and opening, because no, many uh, people uh, may not feel comfortable to talk about it, yeah. and, and, and uh, yeah, it's not that they're not blessed. No. They are blessed. No, I think that's, a, that's very a message important. today. That's I very, so. good, yes. very good, very yes. good. Um, and, and of course, uh, uh, and just to close this uh, topic. And that's very notion, sorry for cutting yeah. you off. That's an Old Testament notion, you know, yeah, of, that's of right. almost that's not right. being blessed. If you have children, you're blessed. If you don't have children, exactly. you're not blessed. No, that's incorrect. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and it's not the Christian way. And unfortunately, I've heard it even, you know, recently, even, mm. even family members saying that, yeah. you know, oh, you, you're blessed if you have children. If you are not have children, you're not blessed. Hey, hey, hang on. You know, mm. Just be careful about that. Okay. That's a very Old Testament, you know, you know, Sarah and, 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 and Elizabeth, you know, but it's a very Old Testament sort of notion, you know, the blessing that you're almost not blessed if you, you know, because we know that, that, you know, in the Old Testament, that's how it was, you know, if you don't have children, you know, um, but that's how it was with war. If, if, if you yeah. win a war, God is with you. If you lose a war, God is not with you. I mean, no, that's right. Yeah. Even even it, the, uh, the mystery of suffering. I mean, it, people forget. Exactly. Uh, so if you don't suffer, yeah. you're blessed. If you do suffer, you're not blessed. I mean, it's, yeah, we know yeah. Jesus Christ suffered. That's not a good theology. No, let's that's put right. it that way. That's I mean, right. I think Thank that's what. Thank you for clearing that up. You know, yes. Uh, and, and as you said, you know, if, if that's what I can offer, you know, and, and um, uh, as, as part of my suffering, you know, yes. it's okay. You know, that, that's, yeah, that's exactly. what I, I that's, that's my offering that I bring every Mass, that I bring Beautiful. every time I receive the Communion, you know, that's, that, that's, that's my offering. You know. Did you ever go down the uh, road of um, uh, adoption or foster care or anything like that? Did you um, think about that? <laughs> um, no, we no. never did. And, and that was a, a deliberate sort of decision. Okay. We, we, we discussed it, me and my yeah. wife. And, and uh, we, um, 
um, we felt we were definitely not called for that. Okay. You know? So um, okay. um, bo both our characters, how we are, sure. and um, and and uh, sort of um, uh, and and our psychology and our ba background that that we felt we could never love and, and adopted. You know, we can. We, well, there were there are our reasons, yeah. but yeah, sure. but we, uh, it's we, it was thing, definitely not something okay. we were called for. You know? But a valid option for those who who, who would like to explore. Definitely, something to think about. Definitely, yeah. and again, it's a, it's a huge calling, yeah. but it's not yeah. for everybody. That's right. So it, it doesn't follow because you have no children, you adopt. No, that's right. That's right. Can you see? You have to be called for that yeah. as well. Yeah. So 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 I mean, that's yeah. my belief, and I think that's even the Catholic belief, and and that's why you know. Um, uh, not everybody can can like like not everybody can get married or have a vocation to be married. Mm, that's right. You know, not everybody has a vocation to be a permanent deacon. Not everybody has a, a, a vocation to be a priest. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to discern what what is your your call from your baptism. Yeah, I think Amen. the basic is you go back to that. That's a very good reminder. Thank you. Yeah. Can we talk about now the <laughs> idea of diaconate? So yes. when yes. did that idea? first get planted in your mind? What yeah. you, so you touched on it in a small way, but can you please unpack that? Yes, yes. And I think what we, what we unpacked, we, we already unpacked a lot because yes. the decision for the diaconate is because of all this what happened. Wow, okay, okay. I, I, thank God in my life, Jarbel, is, is that I never saw, uh, um, sort of, I never had anything to say, you know, I, I never diverted from the Catholic Church, so I never had a faith crisis or, you know, a lot of people had, you know, faith crisis and left the church and came back or whatever. Thank God I never had that. And I always, my faith was always, you know, extremely strong, you know, even when the church, even the church itself, you know, I mean, um, I really had huge knockbacks from the church, you know, sort of yeah. as well, you know, like, when I left the Jesuits, basically I was homeless, you know, sort of back yeah, in Ireland. Yeah, wow. I had no penny, not a penny after 10 years, you know, they, they don't give you a check and say, now you, you get 10, 10 years, sort of, here's some recompensation for that. You just leave the society and you're left with nothing. And I was in Ireland and I had no job, no nothing. Wow, so, 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 so there are huge challenges, you know, sort of, and, and the same thing with, with you know, um, I was mainly manager of aged care facilities from nursing, you know, um, in, in Sydney, a manager of, of aged care facility. And again, you know, sort of because I wanted to do things right, you know, I was, I was disciplined, you know, and, and I had to leave because, you know, I knew I was not welcomed anymore there, you know, so I, I, I could find a lot of excuses to leave the church, but I never believed that, you know. So, so I, I believe that God, you know, I have chapters in my life, you know, and close that chapter, but it's still one book. Mm. And still mm. God, um, I can say now as a deacon, and especially as pastor or director of Sacred Heart, you know, and I talk about it later, you know, I can say that um, I am using all my skills of my life. Yes. Every single, not only skill, every God has been directed me today, to for uh, today for the last fifty nine years, to where yeah, I am today. Yeah. Praise you God. Know, you know, and, and it is praise God. Yes. You know, so 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 um, so the diaconate was after when I was fifty about ten years ago. Um, sort of, my mom died. You know, my mom died, and um, and sort of. It became sort of, uh, and my nursing was, you know, there was a lot of changes in nursing and things like that. And, and I said, oh, you know, I'm fed up of all this, you know, nursing and everything. What am I going to do? You know, and I was going to retire from nursing. Wow. You know, I was going to retire. 50, which is fairly young. Yeah, yeah. very young. But, but you know, I, I, I just said, no, uh, just. And I always had the, um, I always had the, the, uh, um, the wish to study theology. Even okay. though, even though I, I've, I've always kept f information, you know, Catholic, yes. I've always kept updated, and I've always read, you know, encyclicals and stuff like that. And I thought I knew quite a lot, to tell you mm. the truth. When I started theology, I, I realized I knew absolutely <laughs> nothing. <laughs> okay. You know, <laughs> you studied in Sydney. I studied yes. in Sydney, the Catholic okay. Institute of Sydney. Uh, yes, yes, yes. As a, you know, so so I wanted to do that, but. And, 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 and I went to Malta on holidays, and one of, the, my, one of my best friends, he told me, if there's the permanent diaconate in Malta, 
you know, because in Malta there's no permanent diaconate, you know, sort mm. of. Uh, he said, I will become a permanent diaconate. And suddenly I said, that's what I want to be. You just know, like that. Just like that, again. <laughs> my mother died, my friend told me this, I came back here and I start asking, you know, wh where, where my permanent diaconate, wh what to do to become a permanent deacon. Did you know, you know uh, of permanent deacons? Did you? No. Did, no. No. Okay. No. Did, so you didn't think of it to be a possibility before your friend no. said that? Interesting. No. Right. The, but the, uh, what I've seen, and this is where what we've discussed is so important, but I've seen these similarities, and I always said, say now, that the vocation of the, of the Jesuit brother is exactly the same vocation as the permanent diaconate, as the permanent deacon. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah, okay? similar. And the reason for that, so, so I always believe if God calls, he doesn't just throw it out. No. You know? So that burning of the, uh, the Jesuit brother, why I'm saying that is because the, the vocation of the permanent deacon is basically um, to assist the priest. Yes, really. yes. The Jesuit brothers to assist the, the Jesuit priests. Yeah. Okay. The permanent deacon is 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 the person who who joins, so to speak, the uh, um, the secular to the spiritual. Okay. You know that bridge, so to speak, from the secular to the to the to the very spiritual. You know, the brother. That's exactly what it, he he does. The mm. Jesuit brother. Mm. The 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 you know um, he, he with with his. Um, secular tasks, you know, because Jesuit brother could be a nurse, a cook, a yeah. anything that assists the priest, you know, obviously some catechesis as well, you know, they could be, you know, cooks and porters, you know, and, and take managers of the day-to-day -day managing of the, of, the, uh, of the houses of the Jesuits, you know, that's exactly what a deacon is, you know, so, and, and even the vocation of deacons, and that's where I think the Bishop Long has seen um, uh, a, uh, a, 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 a tremendous uh, vocation for the deacons and tremendous role for the deacon to put me as the first um, pastor or director of a parish, you know, sort of. A, yeah, of this is very parish. unique. Yeah, this is very unique. Um, and, but but it's it's very goes back to the uh, you know to the early church, you know, and and to okay. goes back to to up to t you know um, up to the. Uh, 11th century, you know, okay. when the deacons were there, when the deacons were running the, 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 the finances were running, they were basically managers. Yeah, interesting. You know. mm. So the priest would uh, offer the mass or, yeah. or the sacrifice of the mass, yeah. hear confessions, yeah, exactly. um, and then the deacon would assist in the administrative right. and in the uh, running of and, the... And that's fight. why in, in one time mm. of the church, you know, deacons had more power than, 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 than priest and bishop because they had the purse strings and they knew everything. R running you know, the show. And running the show. So anything you want, you have to go sort to of, a deacon. Sort of, yeah, I'm still letting it sink in my head yeah. because a lot of people probably watching, hearing yeah. this for the first time, it goes against your, your thinking. Exactly. The priest is the exactly. pastor. And, and obviously I, I get that, you know, mm. where is the parish priest? I said, no, no I, I'm not a parish priest. I'm the I'm, 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 I'm sort of, you know, I'm the, I'm the one you need to speak to, to know, you yeah. know. So that's, that's something new for yeah. people. Does the priest have to go via you for permission for things? So how does that work? In the day to day, yeah. I mean, listen, I, I mean, canonically, there's always a, uh, a, a, an administrator, you know, sort of yeah. on top of you. So, so yeah. obviously, I have uh, Monsignor McFarlane, okay. who is who is um, who is the uh, uh, the administrator of that's the, the canon law. You have to have a priest, sort of, on, on top of a deacon. So, a deacon cannot be as such on his own um, um, okay. in charge. Yeah. So, yeah. But but I always like to work as a team, and we talk yeah. about synodality and all the rest, which brings us to to sort of as well to the conference, you know, sort of. But but you know, I, I don't say you know. I just say, me, we. I talk about we, not yeah, I. Yeah. You know, so, so I think that's has to be delicate about those things, yeah. you know. And I think it's it's and that's part of the communication skills of a deacon. I think that's part of communication. Uh, my skills, sort of, as as trying to work as a team, not not as a you know. Uh, it's just a role. It's yeah. it's not a hierarchy. I guess these know. days, with yeah. the, the 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 title administrator, yeah, it has changed the. I guess the role of, see, we have parish priest, which is a more permanent thing, but the administrator, which is was known for a long time as a temporary thing, exactly. um, 
but now I guess you are, this is a different title again. So this is, what, but in, yeah, in, it's in, in fact an administrator. Yeah. It, it, not it, replacing it, the priest at all. No. It's, uh, the priest Definitely. has his role. Exactly right. And you're sort exactly. of in partnership and, there. And this is the problem. Assisting the, the, the priest. The, this language of replacing, and that's yeah. not the right language. Yeah, that's right. I just have a role. Mm -hmm. The bishop just gave me a role. It's, it's like when we say hierarchy. Mm -hmm. You know, hi what, what hierarchy means is not that one is on top of the other. Hierarchy means an order. That's what hierarchy means. An order means, like as much as there is an order for laity, an order of catechumens, an order of clergy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so order means a, a, a specific role that each one of us have, and the church puts us in that role, you know, but that, that doesn't mean that, uh, and as we're saying, it's a role of a mother, a role of a father, you know, sort of, it doesn't it's, mean... It's not a matter of who's better or... Exactly. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's not it's a matter of... But it's the I, roles I, that you I'm play. The, you know, I mean, I, I hope mm. that today, you know, we move the way, oh, the father is the, is the top of the family, you know, sort of... I don't think that language is, 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 is helpful today, you know. Yeah. The parents Certainly, are, are the um, team, you know, yeah. sort of, it's a teamwork, you know. They, they both have roles, you know, and, mm. and, and one role is different and, and they can be reversed sometimes. That sometimes the, the, the mother goes to work and this, they're, 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 they're the main, you know, nowadays they're the main, um, what you call it, uh, financial breadwinner, bread bread yeah, yeah. whatever, you know. So, so it can change from time to time, you know. Um, so, so, so that's why I think that the, the, the vocation for, for the diaconate came um, for me, you know, as part of that vocation. Mm -hmm. so, and, and, uh, and I can tell you uh, my seven years of studying or six years of studying theology, they, I, I flourished, I wow. absolutely flourished. So when, was your when did you get ordained? I got ordained on, on the 22nd of uh, February, which is the feast of the seat of Peter oh, wow. um, in, in 2019. So okay. that's about three and a half years ago. Then. Wow, so, wow, yes, wow. Yes, wow. congratulations. By, by, by Bishop uh, Vincent. And then I, I worked as three years in the cathedral. So okay. that was a big learning curve. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's why... Thrown in the deep end. Yeah, thrown okay. in the deep end, yeah. <laughs> but I think that's why the bishop knew me a little bit more personally. Okay. And I think that's why he, he then sort of had the confidence of putting me as a pastoral director in South Mount Druid, okay. as the, the role I'm here, which I've been about seven months, you know, there. Um, and because uh, I w I, uh, uh, in, on the 3rd of November last year, um, I decided that I will finish my nursing, you know, uh, retire from my uh, nursing, yes. so okay. completely. And because obviously I talked a bit too much with the bishop, he heard about that. So then <laughs> he put me full time at, oh, at wow. <laughs> on the 15th of November. Wow, you know, straight one away. Week. <laughs> My so goodness. that's my retirement, Charbel. Okay. So <laughs> well, there you go. Being full time, six Re days a week, working six days a week, and you know that's why I call it ministry, not working. Yes. You know, so which is very now different. you're busier than ever. <laughs> I am much busier than ever. You know, so so yes, so, so that's really the the diaconate sort of vocation. Where, where can I'm we? Uh, a lot of people think that uh, the diaconate uh, and the priesthood is the diaconate is just like a priest without not able to do a few things, right. but they're very different ministries. The, the, this vocation to the diaconate, you're called to, not the priesthood, yes. the diaconate. Can yes. you explain what that means? Yes. You touched on a little bit already. Uh, I, I, think, I think it's very important what you've said, Charbel, because, um, and, and I'm in the formation as well team now of the okay. deacons, of deacons coming up, you know, I'm the, I'm especially the pastoral, I'm the pastoral director for the formation okay. for deacons. And, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm convinced, like one of our um, speakers on the conference, uh, Deacon um, Anthony Gooley, he says it very clearly, and I agree with him completely. Um, if, if you have a vocation for a priest, you know, and, uh, or if you want to be a deacon um, because you're married and you cannot be a priest, then mm. most likely you don't have a vocation for the diaconate, for the permanent diaconate. There it is, okay. Okay, and I'm, I'm very clear about that, yeah. you know. Yeah. Now that might not apply to everybody, but that's as, as a general rule, you know, because you can't be a second class. No. Jesus don't, don't accept second class roles, a, a second class ministry. As, as we said very well, is, is in baptism, you have a specific role, ministry, um, that God did not give it to anybody else. No. except to you in your baptism, when you were conceived, as we say in the psalm, 
you know mm. i know you f from your mother's womb yes you know and that is specifically just for yourself not anybody else so yes so the and remember the diaconate is a vocation within a vocation okay especially if you're married okay so mm -hmm. i'm talking mainly 99 percent of deacons are married yeah, permanent okay. deacons are married um and and uh, so so in australia they're all married you know yes. but i'm just saying even in Amer and i think in america i just read that you know so 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 you know because as you know uh, permanent deacons can be married but can yes. be single as well you uh, must you be married first yes so that's yeah. correct okay. that's correct okay. so so if you if your wife dies then you cannot get remarried you know sort of so yeah, if you're okay. after your ordination you cannot get married again you okay, know sort of so that's part of of the diaconate you know so 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 just to pick that that point so what specific role so so obviously marriage will remain your main commitment okay you cannot and i always say you cannot um, um demolish a, a church to build another church no <laughs> You know, so so this permanent diaconate, um, uh, you know, call is your marriage first, and then within that call, and again, this comes where I did not have children. Okay. You know, within that call, even my wife f found eventually that we can flourish as a couple, not just mm. as Roderick, you know, Roderick only yeah, as a she's husband. She's part of this too. She has to be, and it's yeah. so much so that the wisdom of the Catholic Church that if your wife does not give you permission, you cannot mm, ordain. Yeah, yeah. Literally, wise. she's got the keys, <laughs> and and rightly so, because you cannot you cannot um, suddenly um, go on your own and and leave your wife, you know. Now, that doesn't mean that your wife has to be where you are all the time or be involved completely in your ministry, but the, the wife has to have the approval yes. of, 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 of you know, the ministry that you're going to, 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 to do. So again, if the, if the, and this is another distinction, if the call of the wife is from her baptismal vows is to help her husband, that's fine. But like my wife you know um, she, she 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 doesn't so she was never involved much in 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 in, in, in parish work she, she's involved in other things so you know mm -hmm. with um, help other you know in, in crafts and helping this and helping that and and cooking here and doing that but never in in sort of direct ministry if you if you know what i mean so yes. she was behind the scenes all the time and i always say i can't i can't do what i do without my wife because i mean she yeah. supports me completely um, I don't do any cooking anymore now. I don't do any cleaning anymore in the house, and there's still things that needs to be done, you know. Yes, absolutely. So, 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 so the vocation of of of, the, of a permanent deacon is is very important, uh, you know, that as a couple, okay. And the other thing is that the role is specific. The deacon is as a, the ministries of sacrament, you know, which is the the three sacraments mainly. Um, we say the the uh, match, hatch, and dispatch. You know, <laughs> so match is the sacrament of marriage, hatch yes. is the, the, the baptism, and dispatch is funerals. So those oh, are the three sacraments okay. that, <laughs> that we <laughs> that we do sort of as as per, as as as, uh, as deacons. And and usually I'm talking about the Roman rite deacons now. You know, okay, because yeah. I know the I know East has a slight the East yeah, maybe different. there are slightly difference because I know in the Eastern for the deacons can cannot uh, marry people, but in the Western rite, in the Roman rite, mm. we can because in the in the Eastern rite, Right, only priests have to be, uh, and we have a slightly yeah. different. Yeah, the idea of a permanent diaconate in the East is not as known. It's more uh, transitional because they can become actually priest, be married. Exactly, yeah, that's married true. Men can, that's true. But, that's uh, true. Yes, yeah. that's true. So, so, um, so that's right. You know, so so there is a bit of change difference in the canon and law about as well the role of the priest or a deacon in in the in the, in the between the East and the West during the marriage ceremony you okay. know so so while we say sort of in the roman roman rite um, that the uh, the couple marry themselves give yes. the sacrament to each uh, to each other um, and the and the deacon is there as a witness of the church mm. in the eastern rite obviously it's a, the priest actually marry them you know yeah, give them yeah. the sacrament it's very different so, isn't it so yeah. there's some different uh, sort of theological changes there you know that's right you know so that's the sacraments then obviously assist in in liturgy in the liturgy that's a, a specific role of the deacon and especially the in the liturgy in the in proclaiming the word of god as so much so in the papal um, masses the deacon not not the cardinals no 
Gospel. Not the that's archbishops, right. but the exactly deacon right. is the one to read the Gospel. That's his right. And yeah. that will always be like that. Yeah, so in the cathedral, I have, uh, you know, I do, even if there's the Pope, the deacon will, 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 yeah. will read. Yeah, because exactly. that is the area of specifically for the diaconate, you know. Okay. So the opening the Word of God, proclaiming the Word of God. So anywhere where the deacon, you know, now that doesn't mean that lay people can't proclaim it or do it, but if there's a deacon, that is the specific role yeah, in yeah. that mass, in that area, you know, that the deacon will do it. Yeah. And especially homilies, you know, again, you know, the yeah. homilies, and I, t I give a lot of importance about homilies. And again, uh, the, the, I think one of the um, uh, contribution that a deacon can do is, you know, give the homilies from their own experience, especially married life experience, yes, which is yes. very different from other clergy, you know, that are not married. Not to say that it will replace the priest or the no, time. No, no, it's sort no, of no. a, they can say homily when, yeah, it's that's right. It's a different right. experience. And now yeah. we're not saying one is better than the other, no, either. No. You know, it, it just gives a different ex uh, yeah. perspective. And as Vatican II said very well, remember, Vatican II, one of the three reasons why Vatican II has combined together is actually to re-establish the permanent diaconate. Yeah, interesting. So that was coming from European sort of push, especially Ger uh, Germany and mm. France. You know that 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 was one of the reasons. Okay, you know to to re-establish the permanent diaconate, and in the documents, in you know, it says that 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 there was a loss for you know for one thousand years, a loss, a great loss that that the diaconate has disappeared. Yes. You know, and they wanted to to bring it back so that it will come back as a whole again. You know, yeah. the, the 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 that that ministry of the yeah. church. Yeah, yeah. we need to build it up in Australia again. I, I know in America they <coughs> seem to be quite popular. Our good friend Deacon right. Harold Burke series That's right. Yes. Want many yes. dioceses to have yeah. thousands and thousands of deacons in the We States, we are lucky that Paramatta Diocese is leading leading the uh, Australia sort of in numbers. Okay. We've, we've Do got we know about, how many? Yes, of course. We've got about um, uh, sixteen now. Um, okay. Sixteen good. permanent deacon active about two or three retired, you know, and, and we've got about 12 in formation. Oh, wow. You know, so, so it's, we're definitely it's leading. It's sort of growing, isn't it? Oh, yeah. definitely. And we're leading the Australian sort of, um, you know, um, dioceses in Australia. So we're, okay. we're the leading leaders in, in many ways, leaders, you know, so um, in, even especially this thing about the deacon being a pastoral director, uh, the involvement of the wives in the diaconate yes. formation, yes. That, that's, that's quite unique for, for our um, diocese oh. and, and for, for Australia. What, can we talk about, there's an opportunity coming up this year. Yes. Uh, Deacons Going Into the Deep, uh, yes. an event you've been heavily involved in organising behind the scenes and now it's coming upon us very soon, in the next few months. So can you tell us about an upcoming event uh, yes. you're putting on. So it's it's a it's a speak Lord your servant is listening is the subheading and and it's coming from the uh, from from the Australian Bishop Conference as well. Okay. Um, post post um, Australian Bishop Conference uh, which is finishing you know in a couple of weeks time I think and so so um, so we we would like to to build on that and and the role of deacon in the church in Australia today. That's basically mm -hmm. the theme. Um, we, it's, it's on October 13th, um, uh, 2022, so that's a Thursday to October the 16th, which okay. is a Sunday, and it's at St. Joseph Bokim Hills, 33 Barina Down Road, Bokim Hills. You oh, know, so retreat centre there, beautiful. It is, it beautiful is. Beautiful it's uh, Mary MacKillop sort of um, yes. uh, run, it used to be run by, by, by Sisters of Mary MacKillop. And, and it's, they still, it still does, actually, it's strong. We've got a, a great program, you know, key, key uh, keynote pr yeah, presentation. what can we expect? Yes, we, we've got absolutely brilliant um, uh, program um, of, uh, you know, have Dr. Anne Benjamin talks about deacons needs to nurture the move to a synodal church. So we've got female and male perspectives, you know. We've got um, uh, uh, Father Paul Roberts. He's very good uh, parish priest of Greystain, really, really good pastoral person um, about how how can we help people's experience of religious rituals you know Reverend Gerald Dupont you know deacons um, an international perspective so uh, that's the keynote speakers okay. then
Then we have special events for the wives, so the wives are, oh, are invited. Wow. Okay. Um, again, with Dr. Deborah Snoddy, um, she's a lecturer in CIS um, for high tea and discussions with the wives. And <laughs> so um, very nice. it is very good, you know. So while the husbands are, are doing something else, you know, Dr. Miv Louise Heaney, um, she's music as theology that's on Thursday night to, okay. to just relax a little bit and yeah. it's a bit more fun than anything else and and we've got uh, obviously Bishop Long coming to open and concluding Mass okay. and we have as well the new Apostolic Nuncio for, for, for Australia oh, right, coming right. yeah. uh, Archbishop Charles Balvo okay. and very experienced them um, so so we're very lucky you know and then there's sort of workshops concurrent sessions I what I call concurrent sections and you could uh, you could choose from eight different workshops. Oh, wow. Yes, so, so we've got um, uh, Deacon George Bryan with mental health, you know, um, Gary Stone, Patrick McInerney, interreligious dialogue, and uh, James Calder, who is a Jesuit. Um, they're all doctors and professors, you yeah, know, and, yeah. and Deacon Peter Presdy, uh, prison chaplaincy, you know, and obviously we have Anthony Gooley as well and Dr. John N. Collins, who wrote a lot about the theology of the diaconate, you know, okay. so, so that would be very interesting, you know. So for bookings, you go to Deacon's Conference uh, 2022.flock2.com. Uh, um, any inquiries, you know, if you, if, you, if you Google Deacons going into the de deep, it will come, okay. you know. Only for Deacons? This no, 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 it's open for anybody who's interested um, uh, in, in the diaconate ministry. Okay. So I, I, I encourage um, lay people to come, you know, as, okay. as you said, it's not very well known still in Australia, yes. the, the permanent diaconate. And um, those who are really would like to um, maybe have, don't know anything and maybe they feel they want to, um, they want to do something more in their life as a, you know, and maybe the permanent diaconate is their way, you know, is, yeah, is okay. their way. And, uh, and as well as, as even, we've got um, sisters coming, nuns, religious. Yeah, exactly. um, again, um, there is a lot of debate nowadays about, uh, you know, women deacons and uh, it's one of our subjects. Will that be discussed? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, we yeah, are going to be discussed because that's post-synodal, um, yeah. you know, so um, Anthony Gooley would be, would be uh, the, the speaker for that, you know, and there's a movement at the moment as well um, uh, that, that's sort of promoting that or, or at least getting a discussion because mm. obviously it has to come from Rome eventually but um, but um, but it's it's good to have discussions about that now um, and and uh, so the so role of women in the church in general isn't it it's that's a big right. one that's, that's from right. the that's exactly the plenary right. council but that's exactly uh, right we um, yeah w w whichever way I, I just pray that yeah the Holy Spirit is inspiring people to not get misinterpretations and sometimes and again it's not this Greater than, less than, no. there's this, this, you know, a lot yeah. of people think that. And, and the other thing that I, I found, uh, I heard sort of, you know, we're only discussing. Yeah. We, we're not saying we're going yeah. to do this in yeah, Australia. You're not deciding. Yeah, yeah, whatever church. Rome says, you know, so we're no. not being rebellious no. here, sort of, or no. whatever, you know. Um, it's a discussion that needs to be, you know, listened to. And again, you know, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So if the Lord thinks and Rome thinks that this is the way to move forward, well, then we'll do. But you can't do anything something like this just like that you know unless there is you a can't big jump discussion. the gun and think exactly. uh, yeah no. there's so, going to be so, uh, so we're not yeah. saying that they're going to be Making women uh, deacons in australia you know very soon you know but it's a discussion yeah it's a discussion yeah, and discussion is okay you know, yeah it's a yeah. discussion is okay you know so Yes, yeah, so, so it's a full program and then we have obviously a conference dinner, which is a bit of fun. So it's not just, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, at least it's not just a, a, a very, very, t uh, what you call it, um, it's full, full program, but, but there is a bit of fun as well, which uh, Archbishop Charles Balvo is going to speak um, in, the, in the conference dinner as well on, in, uh, on Saturday night. Okay, so, very so. good. Oh, fantastic. And we have a lovely orchestra actually that comes oh, really? to entertain us oh, wow. <laughs> during dinner, yes. Wow, okay. <laughs> well, we pray for the future of our church and the vocation, the diaconate. Uh, we need, we need, obviously, we need more priests, but we definitely need more deacons as well. And, and it's something that we overlook <laughs> sometimes. Uh, yeah. Let's really consider if God's calling you uh, to the diaconate. Uh, pray, pray about it and, and repeat uh, 1 Samuel. Uh, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Listen to the Lord's voice. It's beautiful. Any final... Um, uh, tips, I guess, to anyone who maybe 
how do they begin the discernment process? I mean, this event could be yeah. one way, just to, <laughs> just to see if you have a calling. Anything they can do from now till then, um, for those who may not even have considered the diaconate, yeah. what, what, what tips do you have for them? Yeah, um, obviously pray, yep. <laughs> one yep. of the most important thing. Be involved in your parish. Okay, uh, yes, this, the very important. Ministry does not just come from the air, you yeah, know. It has, to, it has to evolve, it has to, it has to grow, you know. Um, and if it doesn't grow in a parish, uh, it's probably very difficult to grow anywhere else because mm. you need, to, you know, you need to, to love serving it at the altar. You know, so yeah. so obviously becoming a lector or an acolyte or you know a, a server, oh, yes. okay. a, a, a senior server or whatever, I think that's definitely the first vocation. You know, the first role, and and from there it will it will grow. You know, the other tip would be have a spiritual director. Okay. It's very very important. Um, you cannot discern what the call of God. You think you might think you've got a call, but ultimately the call is of the church. Mm. It's of mm. Christ. So it's not what you think. Yeah, interesting. Okay? Um, and this is a very important step as part yes. of it, myself as a formation, uh, from formation. Um, this is what we look at, we look for. You know, is it yes. your vocation or is the church vocation? Ultimately, is the church vocation, not just, obviously it is your, your vocation as well, but they need to match. Yeah, yeah. Okay? There's That's a lot of calling. people who are delusional that, that they, they, they want to be, the, yes. the, you know, and if you tell them, but I don't think you can study, you know. Oh, you know, how dare you yeah, say yeah, I yeah. can't study, you know, sort of like, well, it proves, <laughs> you, you know, like, you know, do some studying beforehand, especially tertiary, because you can be the best man and the best good-hearted uh, person, but that doesn't make you a deacon. Yeah. You know, yeah. Or, or, you know, so, so um, there are certain qualities, so start studying a little bit. If you, if you don't have tertiary education, start going do some courses, you know, sort of to see whether you are able to do some studies, you know. And as I said, study is not the end of it. So no. I'm not saying, but if you absolutely can't write an essay or can't even look at the computer and do a reference or whatever, you know, I mean, you mm. can build it up, yes. obviously, this yes. is a skill. But, but it's if absolutely, so, so we're nowadays even, we're asking for, for people to have some kind of a course before they start okay. as well, you know, okay. so just to have a bit of an idea, because remember, the church is investing a huge amount of money, you know, and we're lucky in the Diocese of Parramatta that the diocese actually pay for your studies, okay. which is quite unique, you know, yeah, so, wow. and perhaps that's why we've got so many as well, you know. Yeah, so, that makes it easier. So it makes it much easier, which is fair enough. So, so there's a huge investment, you know, sort of in, in the formation for, for the deacons, and that's a commitment which we're very blessed um, that we have in the Diocese of Parramatta. Yeah, okay. It's not, it's not um, everywhere like that. Oh. So, 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 um, um, so, so those are the main, and then it, you find who is the um, vocation promoter for, for deacons and start sort of, you know, do whatever needs to be done sort of because every diocese have its own, you know, rules or whatever, you know, for, yeah. but usually there's about two, two years of discernment okay. before you even start. Yeah. Okay, before you that's even good to start. know. Yeah. So, 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 um, so that's really, um, so, so, and then there's the formation. The formation is built on four pillars. You know, human formation. So yeah. that means about, you know, ourselves getting to know each other. Uh, to, sorry, getting to know yourself, yes. you know, because as image of God and what does that mean? Okay, yeah. and know your, your, your weaknesses and your, and your strengths and things like that. And there is the pastoral formation, which I'm in charge of. You know, there is the um, uh, academic formation. Yeah. So these are the four pillars. And there's the spiritual formation. So okay. that would be sort of... Um, the the formation of a deacon for, okay. for six maybe four to six years to seven years you know depending yeah, wow. how how you evolve what age you are and what you know and how many how many subjects you do in a year and things yeah, like that. Yeah, fascinating. Okay, there you go. So there, uh, thank you very much for explaining all that and and it's great to hear your journey, your personal journey, uh, your calling. Um, yeah, your. Your, your first vacation and now your second vacation. And, you could call um, or third because or, marriage is a big one. That's right, that's <laughs> right, exactly. Um, so that it's, it's amazing. And, and I think if anyone is out there watching and listening and just wanting to know what God is calling them, at least ask the question, Lord, what do you want from me? And then and see if it is, in fact, marriage, if it is, in fact, the diaconate, is it the priesthood, is it religious life? What is the calling? And ask and turn to prayer. 
Th thank you so much uh, again for joining us and we're praying for the success of this event um, and for the diocese in general and for the parish. Uh, so um, thank you for joining us today in the Perusia podcast. It's been a pleasure. All right, God bless you. That's uh, another Perusia podcast. I'm Shabal Raish uh, and until next time, take care. God bless you.